This is a straightforward plot comparing the mean chondral diameters of the various chondrite groups. Now when we look at an individual metroid, an individual chondrite, and the chondrules in this metroid, their diameters vary across a sometimes quite large range. And the distribution of these variation typically follows a normal to log normal distribution. Now here we only look at the mean chondral diameters. Now on the x-axis here are the various chondrite groups. And on the y-axis is the mean chondral diameter. So this is a category plot. Now this further discriminates into the various chondrite classes. So the carbonaceous chondrites, enzyme chondrites, um, ordinary chondrites and enzyme chondrites, and the Rumruti and Kakangari as individual classes. And we then immediately can see a couple of differences and similarities. For example, the carbonaceous chondrites have the smallest, but also the largest chondrules, or mean chondral diameters. And this means they also have the largest scatter in chondral diameters. In ordinary chondrites, for example, chondral diameters are roughly similar. Now, when we look a little bit more into detail here, we see that, as said, carbonaceous chondrites have the largest chondrules, and these, are, these occur in CV and CK chond chondrites. Now, because they are chondrules, not only because of this, but also because of this, it is often said that these two groups form a clan. And something similar can be seen for CO and CM chondrites, but on a different scale. They have the smallest chondrules, or except for the CH chondrites, um, quite small chondrules, but also similar sizes, which is also an indication that they might form some kind of clan. It is then also clear that chondrules um, for CM and CO chondrites cannot have contributed to the CV and CK chondrites because we don't find small chondrules in CV chondrites and vice versa, we don't find large chondrules, 900 microns, in CM chondrites, which means that the chondrules that we now find in CM chondrites must have formed in a different reservoir in the protoplanetary disk than the chondrules that now uh, that contribute to the CV chondrites. Because these are larger, they must have formed in a different reservoir in the protoplanetary disk. So there cannot have been any mixing between these various groups. And this is quite an important constraint here that the chondrule sizes set, that the chondrites must have formed in various um, reservoirs within the protoplanetary disk. Now we then look, for example, at ordinary chondrites, as said, they have about similar mean chondrule sizes, whereas in the enzyme chondrites there's a quite a factor of two between EEL and the H chondrites, so this also requires some kind of explanation. We currently don't have K chondrites, about uh, quite large, about like in CV or C, CK, are again a bit smaller. And the total range in, for example, now um, carbonaceous chondrites is between something like 150 up to 900, so this is um, about a factor of 6. And if we include CH, but these are really unusual, then it's almost an order of magnitude. So the range of mean chondrite diameters among the uh, chondrites is about a factor of 6. And this is it about um, mean chondrule sizes in the various chondrite groups.